You're watching the ACC on ESPN. We're on a snowy afternoon in South Bend, Indiana. It's the number 23 Notre Dame Fighting Irish, 13-2, 2-0 in the ACC against the Clemson Tigers, 11-3, one up and one down in conference play. Glad to have you with us today. Mike Cousins along with former Virginia and NBA guard Corey Alexander. A couple of teams right now that are exceeding expectations here early in conference action. And Clemson coming off of a great non-conference, 1-1 one one in ACC play, making a strong case to be an NCAA team this March. And then Notre Dame off to a great start in ACC play. Two quality wins already in, since they've been in conference play. It was a loss last time out against North Carolina. But Clemson hung in there. They've hung their hat this year on the play of Jerron Blossom game, who's averaging 18 points tonight. And Blossom game gets it done inside and out, returning all ACC performer as he continues to develop even more so offensively and is the leader offensively for a much better team on that end of the floor this year for Brad Brownell. But they play through Blossom game and it often rewards his coach by doing so. The only thing they like to see him do a little bit better, shoot the three, 16% coming into today's play. Lots of options for Notre Dame. One of the toughest to guard is Steve Astoria. And Steve Astoria is at his best when the game is on the line. Mike Gray ultra confident and putting the ball in his senior's hand and allowing the fate of his team to rest on his shoulders. And thus far this year in ACC play, Steve Astoria has delivered. Head coach of the Tigers, he is Brad Brownell in year number seven, 48 years old, and this is a homecoming for him to the Hoosier State, the native of Evansville, Indiana. Former head coach at UNC Wilmington and Wright State, where he was a 2008 Horizon League Coach of the Year. And in year number 17 at the helm for Notre Dame, 57 years old, Mike Gray. Nine of the last ten years have been 20 win seasons, and they're already just seven shy of that at 13 and two. Some turnover on his staff this year. You see Rod Bolanis there sitting to his left, and not much has changed around here. The program remains as successful as it's ever been. Absolutely, and Mike Gray adding three former players to his bench, to his staff this year, and I believe that's really bolstered what has already been a great program, getting that experience back on the sideline. Ryan Ayers, Ryan Humphrey, a couple of former players rounding out the staff for the Irish in their home whites this afternoon. And the Tigers in the orange here on the road. First touch for Blossom game, guarded by Bonzi Colson, a couple of dribbles, and it's six foot seven going to work there in the post. And that's a matchup, of course, you're looking forward to watching with knowing these two teams and knowing their history. But more importantly, Bonzi Colson and Jerome Blossom game, very similar as far as the way that they play both inside first guys and put both putting up huge numbers this season. Difficult feed into the post for Gebbin from Farrell straight away. And it's out of bounds, stays with Notre Dame. 11 on the shot clock on their first possession. And that matchup between Blossom game and Colson as well. Both those guys undersized, honestly, for four, the, side, the four position in the ACC. But their production has been tremendous. Especially Colson at six foot five. He's number 35 in the white. But he's got a seven foot wingspan, makes him dangerous both ends of the floor. Yeah, and both those guys play inside out as we see, you know, something that's very rare for Notre Dame. An empty possession to start out the game. One of the better offensive executing teams in the country, but a shot clock violation on the first possession. Well, I think it's doubly rare to see a shot clock violation and an air ball <laughs> from Notre Dame. Last game against Louisville here at home on Wednesday. Farrell early in the game had a shot that looked like that one. He basically just threw it up, and it ended up going in. Well, Farrell's had that kind of year, so maybe it wasn't luck for him. It's just, you know, part of his package, part of his repertoire. Five to shoot here for the Tigers. Grantham going baseline. He's met by Farrell. It was in the air as they collided, so that foul is going to go against Matt Farrell. And Farrell actually bailing Clemson out on that possession. I'm not sure that Grantham knew that there was only one second left on the shot clock when that foul occurred. Grantham gets it in. And back to the corner for Holmes. Three straight possessions. Clemson has gone inside to Blossom game. He scored on the first one, but Notre Dame coming up with stops on the last two possessions. That's one of the things that 
Mike Bray talked with us about earlier is how much better of a defensive team this Notre Dame team was and probably the main reason that they're sitting at 2-0 in ACC play right now is because of what they've done on the defensive end of the floor. We know Mike Bray to be the offensive mind that he is, but defensively he feels like this team is one of the best he's had in a while. And it hasn't just been the starters that have been great defensive players. It's the guys that come off the bench, a T.J. Gibbs or a Rex Fluger. The rare turnover by Notre Dame. Blossom game runs the floor and finishes with two. And Brad Brownell talked to us about just that. He saw. He said that you rarely see Notre Dame make plays that result in an opposing team getting a layup at the end of the floor. So I'm sure he has to be happy with his team's defense here early in the game. Vastoria, that's his spot straight away. Off back iron, rebound for Colson, and Vastoria gets a second chance to tee it up. And rarely does he miss two in a row from three-point range where he shoots 44%. Mitchell from the left side converts. And you see Shelton Mitchell not settling to run the offense there, but taking it upon himself to get the ball to the rim and make a play. And I believe that's another one of the differences in Clemson this year. And having Mitchell at the point guard, they have an offensive-minded player at that position, which I believe makes this show run so much better for the group in orange. Tigers with a 6-0 lead, 3 of 4 from the floor to begin the game, and it's another close-range look for Blossom game. And that draws a quick timeout from Mike Bray, not happy with what his defense has done against Clemson's leading score. And I'm sure he's not, and of course, to see Blossom game, who has to be number one on the scouting report, getting an easy look as such, especially as, as well as his team has played defensively recently, Mike Bray has to be disappointed with this start, but if you're Brad Brown now, you have to love what you're seeing, especially for a program that has never beaten Notre Dame. So Clemson 0-4 against Notre Dame since coming into the ACC, and really the only time they've ever played. So he has to be excited about that. You see defensively, Clemson covering up the rim, four players in orange in the paint, coming up with a turnover from Beecham, and then just a free run at the rim for Jerron Blossom game. Blossom game is too good offensively to give him opportunities that easy. Well, they're great at taking the ball away, and that has been part of the turnaround under Clemson for Brad Brownell is hanging their hat on defense. But this year, like you were just mentioning with Shelton Mitchell and the transfer group that has been a part of this squad this year, Marquise Reed, the transfer from Robert Morris as well, Elijah Thomas from Texas A&M. They've been a lot more of a high-scoring unit than they have in years past. And Brad Brownell said that he feels as though maybe his defense has suffered a bit. You know, Clemson traditionally a stingy defensive team, but because he has those offensive mentalities, they may not be as good defensively. But he doesn't mind having guys that can score out there on the court. Clemson's had his past struggles. A couple of subs into the game. One of them is T.J. Gibbs, who misses from three. Rex Fluger, the sophomore from California, joins him on the floor as well. Gets it inside with the left hand, and that could be a size mismatch all afternoon for Clemson with Thomas at 6'9", 230. And Thomas is very skilled, a young man who was a top 50 recruit coming out of high school, signed with Texas A&M, but only stayed there for one semester. So made him eligible after transferring in the second semester this year, and he's added instant offense to this Clemson lineup. Colson didn't get a great angle trying to go baseline, but he did draw the foul. And the foul is on Thomas, his first, that sends Colson to the line. But the addition of Thomas into Clemson's lineup does multiple things. It gives him another post score, but it also allows Jatay to stay out of foul trouble because you are able to spare him in minutes where you, normally he gets tired and picks up fouls. And now you have, you know, another post presence on both ends of the floor for Brad Brownell. But this is the probably the first time that Brad Brownell has had this type of depth at Clemson. And it's really showed in the way that they played, especially, you know, after the semester when they've gotten those transfers back in the lineup. It's a reliable eight-man rotation for Clemson. Holmes got Fluger in the air and then walked with it. So the Tigers have put ten early points on the board and the only two from the number 23 Fighting Irish have come at the free throw line here in the first four minutes.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by USAA. Insurance, banking, and investments tailored for the military community. And Courtyard, the official hotel of the NFL. Transfers are a part of the story this year for the Clemson Tigers. Two points apiece here in the early going for both Shelton Mitchell and Elijah Thomas. And you see Shelton Mitchell's ability not only to get out and score, but to also run the show. And Thomas, strong post presence for the Tigers. And we didn't even mention Marquise Reed, who is the third leading scorer for these Clemson Tigers, who now have eight players averaging seven and a half or more points per game. A lot of depth for a team now averaging 79 points a game for Brad Brownell, who he hasn't seen these type of numbers since he's been in Clemson, South Carolina. He is very happy to tell you that this is the best offensive unit he's had now in year number seven. And looking to get back to the NCAA tournament. Clemson a year ago finished 10 and 8 in the league, seventh in the ACC. Vastoria drives the lane, contact with Thomas, and it's Thomas who comes away with it. And now we've got a whistle. Looks like somebody lost their chapstick along the sideline. Well, oh my God, Les, Les Jones, Jones goes over to pick it up. Absolutely, Les Jones and friendly as he returns it. But he's oh, friendly. Don't, don't because, be embarrassed now. Because it's two degrees <laughs> outside. If you don't have a chapstick in your pocket, you're probably in trouble today. <laughs> don't be embarrassed now after you threw your chapstick on the floor <laughs> and you didn't like the official's call. Blossom Games got a mismatch against Vastoria, and he turns baseline and just left it off to Fry. And early in the game, Mike Gray has allowed Blossom Game to operate on the post, leaving him alone. As B.J. beats him, breaks a little bit of what's been a slump for him recently, knocking down the three-pointer. Beecham, the last couple games, has been quiet. Two points against Louisville on Wednesday. And one of their bigger games this year as well against Villanova had just four. Six against Pittsburgh in the ACC opener. It doesn't worry Mike Bray all that much because he knows that the rest of his team can pick up the slack. But certainly Irish fans would like to see more from B.J. Beecham. Well, they become even more dangerous from beyond the arc when you have a guy like Beecham making his shots. But Matt Farrell has made his shots all year long. And now you see the point guard stepping up and getting involved in the offensive action. The lead down to four for Clemson. Grantham baseline floater. Thomas, no good with the left hand tip it. Third try doesn't fall as Fluger fights for it. Three on two for Clemson. This is not just second chance, but it's third chance and fourth chance opportunities. And the Tigers convert none of them. An 8-2 Notre Dame run becomes 11-2 on the three by Rex Fluger. Timeout Tigers. You get an opportunity to see just how dangerous the Fighting Irish are. Just like that, they're able to put points on the board, and they use the three-pointer as such a weapon. B.J. Beecham getting out in transition, no hesitation at all, knocks down the three, and then Matt Farrell from the corner finds his spot, and Rex Fluger, who comes off the bench for defensive purposes, but is still capable of knocking down the tray ball. Just like that, 11 points. Score quick, fast, in a hurry for the Fighting Irish to get them right back in this game. And you said it. Fluger is primarily a guy who's coming into the game to be a stopper, get some rebounds. Hey, if you commit a foul, it's okay. But he's a guy who was a pretty big scorer in high school at modern day, California. 44% from deep. And he got for 26 this year. He got the call and went into the game because Mike Bray was unhappy with the way his team was playing defensively. So, of course, if you're Fluger, you do a great job on one end of the floor, knocking down the three and then coming up with another defensive stand as Notre Dame now has a, a chance to either tie or take the lead in this game. 
The Irish show that they can go one deeper as well with number one, Austin Torres, the local senior from Granger, Indiana, into the game. Not a scorer, but certainly a defender and another big body to help cycle through underneath the basket. Well, Mike Bray also mentioned how he flies around and his energy just makes plays based upon the fact that the defense always has to be concerned about him crashing the offensive boards as well. So he loves having Torres on the floor just to make sure that the energy is up for his group and everyone else feeds off of that. Farrell thought he had the opportunity baseline and a rare turnover from the Irish point guard. Mitchell in transition. A lot of hands reaching in on that one. The foul charged to Fluger for the Irish is first. Transition offense here in the first eight minutes, seven minutes of this game has been pretty important for Clemson. They're just trying to beat the Irish back down the floor. Well, and that's the respect that Brad Brunell has for what Mike Bray's team has now become defensively is he understands it's going to be better for them to get these transition buckets, but it also is an advantage for Clemson to do so when they have the offensive talent that we've talked about early in the game. Jatay's lob for Blossom game off the mark. Vastoria finds Gibbs running the floor. His floater swatted off the backboard. Gibbs outside for Beecham. Tees up a three. Yes! And the Irish have the lead for the first time today. Notre Dame with only four field goals in this game, but all four of them coming from beyond the bonus here. So if you're Mike Bray, you're happy with the way your team is moving the basketball. Of course you want something going as far as in the paint because that normally means Bonzi Colson, but he's got to be ecstatic to see B.J. Beecham knock down a couple of jump shots here early. Getting back to it, Beecham floated around a lot in that game against Louisville. Two points in just 34 minutes. Not his usual aggressive self. Certainly doesn't take away from the efforts of Vastoria and Farrell, who combined it for 46 against the Cardinal on Wednesday. The one thing we have seen with this group is Beecham is unable to finish on that three, is that Mike Gray is comfortable actually playing without Vastoria and Beecham. He mentioned that to us earlier, where they actually made a run against Pittsburgh with both those seniors on the bench. Reed gets double team, and that's the third time in this first half that the Tigers have been called for a travel. Reed has gotten the last couple called against him. He wants clarification. What's well, a point of 43 left here in the first? It's a point of emphasis on the year under the NCAA directives to make sure that they call that. But the point of emphasis for the Notre Dame Fighting Iris is to find the open man beyond the arc. Gibbs in there with the offensive rebound, finds Beecham, and he pays it off as the Irish now lead by two. Welcome back here to Purcell Pavilion at the Joyce Center. Number 23, Notre Dame out in front by two against Clemson. As the Irish look to go to 3-0. In conference play to start the year. And a look around the ACC. Plenty of action. As Florida State and Virginia Tech. It's a 52-41 game. The Knolls at 2-0 as well. Coach K just had his successful surgery yesterday. So hopefully back within that four-week time span. And snow. You think if there's snow in the ACC, it's going to be affecting Northwest Indiana. It's not the case. North Carolina and NC State postponed until tomorrow at 1 Eastern. That was supposed to be played tonight at 8 Eastern. And now Farrell actually with his third turnover here early in this game, normally very sure-handed, the point guard for the Irish. That's been one of the struggles for Notre Dame so far in this game. Give Clemson's defense credit, but they've got to turn those turnovers into points on the other end of the floor. Yeah, the turnovers for Farrell are very strange because Notre Dame leads the country in a couple categories. Free throw percentage, assist to turnover ratio, and just pure turnovers per game. Nine turnovers a game. And when you've got Farrell giving the ball up, 
that's a real surprise. And that's been an area where he's been so special all season long. And, you know, Mike Gray talked to us about the stability of this team. They're not very emotional group. They're just pretty much they even kill. And so these turnovers, I'm sure, won't allow them to get out of it. But, you know, Coach Bray not happy about it, actually taking Farrell out of the game at this point. I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the fact that he has those three turnovers early. Vastoria drive in, kick out. Colson with the three-pointer. And the answer at the other end for the right hand of Gabe DeVoe. And Gabe DeVoe started out the season getting a lot of starter minutes with the injury to Shelton Mitchell. And played very well in the starting lineup. Now coming off the bench, hasn't shot the ball as well as of late, but gives Brad Brownell another huge punch coming off the bench. Olsen again. Somewhat of a younger look here on the floor for the Irish with Fluger. Matt Ryan seeing his first action of the day. Gibbs, the freshman, Olsen and Vastoria. DeVoe likes that spot. Three-pointer again. And that's one where you just got to read the scouting report. Matt Ryan giving too much space. Gabe DeVoe already made one from that spot. Just on a previous possession, maybe a couple feet beyond that spot, but Matt Ryan, the shooter himself, knows that he would take that shot. You got to take that away from the ball. Ryan does, indeed does want to try the three. And that's one of the things Mike Bray also said is he's got to try and find more time, more minutes for Ryan, number four, to get on the floor. And that's one of those shots with Blossom game, of course, is a capable three-point shooter, but that's one where he settled for a shot in comparison to, I honestly think he had a lane to drive it to the rim and put more pressure on the defense. Ryan for three. Team's best at 47%. After an early run to put Clemson up, Notre Dame went on an 11-2 run. Now they're just trading three-point field goals, 21-20, Tigers. And Mike Gray looking at Matt Ryan saying, don't worry about that one. Yet, that's the third straight time Gabe DeVoe has made a shot from that spot. And I understand what he's saying. That's a tough shot. But yet, you can't give him that much space. Good thought from Vastoria going to the post-up game. And a foul on the loose ball as wholesale changes get ready to happen on both sides. Gebbin, Farrell, Beecham coming into the game for the Fighting Irish. Thomas Grantham back onto the floor for Clemson. Foul number two on the Tigers' City Jeté. And I believe what we're seeing, you know, with the coaches substituting and the rotations, the way they are in this game so far, you see one of the reasons why the ACC is such a good league this year is because all of these quality teams have depth. You see everyone going eight deep, nine deep, 10 deep. Florida State going 11, 11 12, deep. 13 deep at times. But that's really what's made this league so good this year because you're doing it with so many quality players as DeVoe finally misses a three from that spot. I'm sure, that was more of a heat check than anything else. Can't blame the guy, though. No, absolutely. Farrell just back off the bench. And with the number of turnovers he's had so far, you'd imagine he might start driving rather than taking the three. Now that's the shot right there and nothing against Sheldon Mitchell, but that's not his strength. I'm sure Brad Brownell would have preferred for him to take that one to the rim. Back and forth we go here in the first half in South Bend. Clemson leads by one on the road. This Monday, 8 Eastern on ESPN, it's the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. Clemson takes on Alabama at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. The game also streaming live on the ESPN app or on Watch ESPN. And the Tigers basketball team is certainly okay with being second fiddle to the football team at this time of year. They're used to it. The Tigers football team was in this game a year ago. They lost 45-40. And at halftime of the last game against Carolina, a special guest.
Head football coach Dabo Sweeney trying to fire up the crowd there. Couldn't get the, the job done for the basketball team. As the Tigers lost in overtime 89-86. But as far as offense goes for the football squad, well, that's the number one matchup in that championship game. The Tigers offense against the Crimson Tide defense. And the Tigers offense has operated very well on the court here today. And they've been able to do so because they've been better in the paint than have the Irish. Notre Dame has actually shot 14 of their 17 field goal attempts from beyond the three-point arc. Make it another one <laughs> as Vastoria is unable to finish on that play. And, and Notre Dame a great three-point shooting team, but you can't rely on that the entire time. Clemson has had no problem doing just that. They're four of eight from three. And they stretch their lead to six. And the 8-0 run for Clemson after Notre Dame came out and made all those threes to get them back into this game. And every Notre Dame field goal made so far has been from beyond the arc. Six of their field goals, well, all six of their field goals, three-pointers so far in this game. Vastoria takes the high screen. Farrell getting back to driving, and he is rejected at the basket. Now Mitchell kept out of the lane by Vastoria. Into the half court set for Clemson. And Vastoria a bit different defender than Matt Ryan, picking up DeVoe and making sure he forced him off, this, off that line. A blossom game may have gotten away with warding off there in the pose. And then it comes back to Biden with a double dribble call. In that situation, I think he preferred the turnover than the foul. <laughs> <laughs> the foul might make him have to go sit down. The turnover, coach looks at you funny, you go back and you play another possession. And for a guy like him, averaging 18 points a game, coming off 24 against Carolina, a lot of leeway to work with. Absolutely. He actually is going to take a quick breather, but I'm sure it had nothing to do with the turnover. Just his time to get a quick blow, but Brad Brownell does not leave him on the bench very long. Colson got double teamed in the corner. Vastoria right to the basket, and that's where the Fighting Irish can be at their best. A great decision by Vastoria to drive the basketball, not settle for a three-pointer, and get to the rim. And for a guy like Steve Vastoria, who is a great shooter, making a layup at times can get you right on track. Lob for Thomas, and his positioning was too good for Colson to do much about it. And you see where the advantage is for Clemson, and Brad Brownell coming in and imploring his guys to get the ball in the paint. Stop selling for a bunch of, you know, three-pointers. And, of course, you take the threes when they're open, but get the ball in the paint and take advantage of where your true opportunities are. Colson trying to use his size to his advantage. Thomas played off. Foot on the line. It's a two-point field goal and a four-point game. Mitchell floats and delivers. Great, great decision there by Shelton Mitchell. You know, the three-pointer has just become the trend in this game. Avery Holmes taking a quick one and a, a very good three-point shooter, deservedly so. Michelle Mitchell not firing a three there, attacking the basket and coming away with two points because of it. Once again, it's under 10 seconds on the shot clock for Notre Dame. Farrell gets rid of it, Vastoria fading on a three, still got it. But just mentioned, Vastoria actually hadn't made a three until that possession, but he got the layup early, and Notre Dame making a huge mistake in the zone, not identifying Gabe DeVoe, who's now made his fourth three-pointer on the afternoon. If you're going to play a zone, you got to know where 10 is, the way he's shooting the basketball here today. The Irish have mixed in the zone to varying degrees of success this year. They used it to help their comeback run against Pittsburgh. So far today it has not been a great asset for them. And Matt Farrell has not been his team's greatest asset either. That's his fourth turnover to just one assist. And very uncharacteristic of Farrell. And we mentioned before, very sure-handed with the basketball. Mike Bray trusts him a tremendous amount, but he did also mention to us earlier today that 
Farrell had played more minutes, especially in these first two ACC games, than he really has in his career. And this is a new role for him, and he felt like he may have just been a little bit tired after the Louisville game and was trying to find a way to get him some rest. And maybe that's some fatigue showing on Farrell's part. 38 minutes on Wednesday. Foul in the post, called against Austin Torres. Two hands used, and that's what draws the personal. Clemson continues to lead here late in the first. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by One A Day Men's and Women's and GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Well, the Tigers looking to go to 2-1 and one in conference play. A win against Wake Forest and then lost against North Carolina. Shooting 50% from three right now. Five of ten from deep. 16 attempted threes for Notre Dame in that first half. And you look at that number, that's a new ACC high in attempts since they joined the league for Notre Dame. The previous high was 14. Well, it's been solely about the three for Notre Dame this afternoon. And again, if you're Mike Gray, you don't mind the threes, but you want a little bit more balance, especially with guys like Vestoria and Farrell who are capable of driving the ball to the rim. And what it often does is constricts your defense, the defense, and allows you to be able to kick out for those three-pointers playing inside out. Leading score right now for the Tigers. Also with a game high is Gabe Duvall with a dozen. Anzi Colson leads Notre Dame with seven. Looking to do it again from deep. There's Duvall off the mark. She haven't been able to say much. Four of six now from three. But Gabe Duvall has stayed on the court because of the way he shot the ball. We haven't seen as much of Avery Holmes here in the first half, but that's the luxury that Brad Brownell has with this team this year. He can kind of go with the hot hand as we see an offensive, offensive foul. Austin Torres not getting set on that screen. But that's not a luxury that Brad Brownell has had in the past with this Clemson team. And I honestly believe that that's something that's going to make them one of the teams kind of in the mix of things as this ACC season goes along to crown the ACC champion. I think Clemson, with their depth and the system that Brad Brownell plays, I think they're that good to where they can be in that conversation. This type of time of year last year was when Clemson went on its run, started to surprise some folks. They ripped off wins against Syracuse, Duke, Louisville, Miami. And they were very close to winning against North Carolina. Three-pointer is good for Grantham to make it 36-27. A team that last year was just a little bit short where if Blossom game had a big game, then it could be their night if he didn't couldn't be their night. This year, if he doesn't have a big game, it could still be their night. Absolutely, because he hasn't really put up major numbers here this afternoon, but with the bow playing the way he's playing, Grantham's making shots. You know, they have a more balanced offense, and you see them attacking the paint. Conversely to Notre Dame, you see everything from beyond the three-point line. Fortunately, Beecham has continued to shoot the ball extremely well. Vastoria one-on-one -on -one against Blossom Game. They tried to double. Beecham was a little bit too hesitant. Blossom Game read that well. Yeah, but what you see is by going inside the Blossom Game, you also free up opportunities on the outside. And the way Clemson shot the basketball at this point, Notre Dame is almost scared to help, which gives Blossom Game an advantage in the post. The question is, man to man, who do you put on Blossom game that can guard him one on one? Well, you don't put on anyone on that can guard him one on one, but the only person I believe that can really slow him down would be Bonzi Colson, although he gives up a couple inches in height. The wingspan allows him to be able to contest the shots of Blossom game. We saw early in the game where Clemson made a point to get the ball to Blossom game early. He scored on the first possession, but after that it was about two to three possessions where Notre Dame's defense won. So I think and a lot of that had to do with the individual defense of Bonzi Colson. Beecham turns, foot on the line. A long two for Beecham.
Mitchell off the high screen. Vastoria tips it away. Farrell looking to get his assist count up. And Gibbs hit on his way to the basket by Mitchell. Foul number two on the Tigers' point guard. And a smart play by Gibbs. Early when he first came into the game, he checked in, fresh off the bench, and shot a three-pointer from the exact same spot that he caught the basketball in that possession. This time, putting the ball on the floor, getting to the rim, and picking up the foul on Mitchell, but more importantly, getting to the free throw line for Notre Dame, where they really only have two attempts in this game so far, and they're the best in the country once they get the line of cashing in. Gibbs has been great now, 16 for 21 of the year from the line. Notre Dame has a squad, 84% free throw shooting. And that's three points ahead of the next closest team. Marquette is second at 81%. Yeah, Brad Brownell told us, that don't put him at the free throw line, just forget it. And of course, as we talk about it, Gibbs misses a free throw. So as you talked about it, you were the one jinxing last year. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Down the stretch against Louisville, Notre Dame shot 11 of 12 at the line, even without hitting many field goals. Just one made basket in the last six and a half minutes. Reach in foul. Vastorius first, and the team sixth. I love how Mike Ray described Steve Vastoria early today, talking about his toughness, and he said, simply but he does it all with a smile on his face he's talking about the, co the contrast between he and Farrell because it's very seldom a smile on Farrell's face when he shows his toughness but Vastoria does it the baby face assassin that's the nickname he's got from Jack Nolan the radio voice of the Fighting Irish and it's true because it doesn't yet look like Vastoria shaves <laughs> and he's in his senior year but it certainly doesn't take away from how good of a player he is and he definitely has a closer mentality at the end of the games and halves as we see the ball in his half, his hands here for the final 15 plus seconds. Farrell with five seconds. Now Beecham, a contested three, no good. That brings the first half to an end. Jerron Blossom game got him started. Gabe DeVoe kept him going. And a good offensive team effort for Clemson gives the Tigers a 40-33 lead with 20 minutes gone here at the Joyce Center. So the Tigers playing Notre Dame for the fifth time in the ACC and looking for their first win. They're halfway there. At the break now, we send it to Dino Gaudio, Matt Schick in the studio. Welcome back to the Hoosier State. One half down, one to go as the Clemson Tigers look to go to two and one in ACC play. And they're halfway there, a 40-33 lead against the number 23 Notre Dame Fighting Irish. My cousins, Corey Alexander, glad to have you along here on a snowy Saturday in Indiana. And the numbers right now, very favorable if you like to be a three-point shooter. Absolutely, and you see 14 three-pointers made between the, both these teams, but you look at the points in the paint, the 18-2 advantage for Clemson really has been the difference in this game. Notre Dame has lived beyond that three-point arc. They're going to have to get something going to the basket in the second half to be successful. For Brad Brownell's squad, the leading scorer is Gabe DeVoe at the break. Four of six from deep. All 12 of his points coming from three-point range. Jerron Blossom game, five of nine. He's got ten points, four rebounds. Notre Dame led by V.J. Beecham. And the Irish go back to work here down by seven. And Blossom game has his highest scoring average versus any ACC opponent versus Notre Dame, averaging 18 points per game as Gavin is able to pick up Second chance points for Notre Dame after a great attack by Vestoria, even though he was unable to finish. You see Mike Gray getting the message across to his team. We can't live on the three-pointer alone. That was the first field goal attempt of the game for Gebbin. Not a primary offensive threat. Blossom game misses. Jate tries to put it back in. Out of bounds to the Irish. You know, mentioned Blossom game. His 18 points per game versus Notre Dame, the highest against any of his ACC opponents, but never beaten the Fighting Irish. So and we talked with Brad Brownell earlier about, you know, his role with this team and how it really has changed 
somewhat from where he was a year ago. Even though he's still their leading scorer and playing very well, not as much of the burden is on him to go out and have a great game every night. Bastoria in the lane. Kevin, offensive rebound. That was halfway down. That was like a carnival game. You think it's going in, and then it turns around on you. Everyone, including Gavin, everyone pretty much had run away at that point, expecting for that one to go down. Then Avery Holmes comes down and knocks down a three, a five-point swing in favor of the Tigers. But I'm not sure what else Gavin could do to get that one to go in the basket. First points of the day for Holmes, the second leading scorer for the Tigers. Farrell, not a great first half, assist to turnover wise. Long rebound down to Blossom Gate. One on one against Colson. Colson was disciplined with his feet, his arms betrayed him, and he's charged with his first foul. Mitchell, too much on the fastball, off the hands of Blossom game. Interesting to see how Matt Farrell responds here in the second half as he knocks down the three in the corner. After having what for him was a subpar first half, great sign knocking down his first shot coming out of the intermission. Five to shoot for the Tigers. Beecher gets a hand on it, takes it away. Farrell back out. Beecham up top for three. Blossom game against Kevin. And a foul on the big man for Notre Dame. Much to the dislike of the Irish faithful, but they love the way they come out shooting the three here in the second half. Matt Farrell knocking one down the corner, and then Farrell getting into the paint probing and finding Beecham at the top of the key, who happens to be wearing his three goggles even inside. Lots of games, 68% free throw shooter. If there's anything to be found that's good about playing when it's four degrees outside, <laughs> it's that there's no students on campus right now. So at this end of the floor is normally where the student section is. And there are some students here today, but certainly not the full contingent that you'll see later in conference play. So maybe a little bit of a benefit there for the Tigers to be visiting Notre Dame in this portion of the calendar. But for the environment we've had here, you wouldn't be able to tell that there were no students in. The, the Irish faithful have shown up in full effect here regardless of the snow. And, of course, where I live on the East Coast, the Southeast is getting beat up by snow right now. And the same weather is going on here with even much colder temperatures. But people act as though there's nothing wrong with this. And this is just normal time. You, you live out here in the Midwest. You're used to this. I'm not. You're from the territory of the country where you don't get an ice scraper with your <laughs> rental car. That's how you should be worried. Mitchell has his pocket picked by Farrell. He leads the break with his eyes up and gets Notre Dame into a half-court set. And that was great hustle by Farrell. And one of those plays where Mike Bray just talks about his toughness and his winning attitude. Beecham trying to connect again from deep. 14 points today for Beecham. Where in the last two games, he had just eight against Louisville and Pittsburgh. The Irish still 2-0. Notre Dame perfect in conference action so far. The Tigers 1-1. One one. Pastoria ahead for Beecham. Into the lane with contact. The Irish bench irate there wasn't a foul. 
Holmes. Weak side rebound. Grantham in the collision with Colson. It's getting physical and heated inside the Joyce Center. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the new DQ Deluxe Bacon Cheeseburger 5 Buck Lunch and Allstate. It's good to be in good hands. Early results here in the second half. Notre Dame has done a better job taking care of the ball. They turned it over seven times in the first half. They only averaged nine a game, and they've gotten better here within four and a half minutes. And they have two assists, and both those assists by Matt Farrell in the second half, and really that's where he makes this team so steady, his ability to handle the basketball and get his shooters opportunity. So Farrell with two assists and also a three-pointer here in the second half, so he's come out with a much better effort in the second stanza. Second fewest in the NCAA. It's now 11 assists on 14 made baskets for Notre Dame. And they were number one for the longest time until the game against Louisville. Of course, that's one of the things that Louisville does is forces you to turn the basketball over as Mitchell gets to the rim is unable to finish. But the defense for Notre Dame in this second half has been better as well as they've continued to operate on that end of the floor and keeping Blossom Game somewhat in check. And that's the guy that they have to be most concerned about for the Clemson Tiger team. Colson out for Beecher. A wide open look from three. He is five of eight from deep. They dump it in for Blossom Game. Help comes from Fluger. Vastoria got the job done one on one. And Vastoria actually taking on that challenge here in the second half. Bonzi Colson had the responsibility of guarding Jerome Blossom Game in the first half, but it's been all Stephen Vastoria in the second half, and he's done a very good job on both ends of the floor. He takes it himself. Notre Dame has led for less than three minutes, but they're back in front, 46-45. Timeout, Clemson. Well, the best play out of a double team is to find the open man. Bonzi Colson does a great job catching in the post, recognizing the double, finding Beecham, who's now five for eight for three, and gives his Irish the lead. It's still a battle of three-point field goals. Notre Dame, 11 made threes. The last one by V.J. Beecham with a game-high 17 and puts the Irish in front, 46-45. As they try to go to 3-0 and in ACC play. Clemson trying to take down Notre Dame for the first time in five tries. That's a pretty good formula to do it. Blossom game on the baseline with the dunk now has 14. But give Marquise Reed the credit on that possession, splitting the double team, and now you're basically playing 5-1-3. Hard to keep track of Blossom game when you only have three defenders that have to help. Farrell driving kick, Fluger. Reed not a big scoring presence today, just two points. The transfer from Robert Morris, who averages 11 on the year. Grantham pulls up and connects. And if you're Brad Brownell, it's always encouraging to see Grantham being aggressive. With his talent, his skill level, he's a guy that we often should see more from on a nightly basis. Yeah, he was quiet last game against North Carolina. It took him until there were fewer than five minutes left in that first half to get his first bucket. Colson climbing the ladder and
and using the window. And that's where you're used to seeing Bonzi Colson doing the majority of his work. Of course, he's a very good three-point shooter and gets it done in many areas on the offensive end of the floor. But when he's on the offensive glass, he is hard to contain. Notre Dame now going back to the zone. And this is where Gabe DeVoe was able to hurt Notre Dame in the first half as Grantham steps up to shoot another three. But DeVoe now at the scorer's table. Brad Brownell recognizing the zone wants to make sure he gets a sharpshooter in the game. DeVoe four of six from three. He waits to check back in. So does Gebbin. Vastoria had the step on Mitchell. It's up top again. Can't lose Blossom game at the back of the defense. And there's no defense for that. You have to keep a body on Blossom game. His ability to go above the rim on the back line, you have to stay attached. But oftentimes with the shooters on the floor, it's difficult to do against the zone defense. Beach him for three. They can't call him off right now. Absolutely not. B.J. Beecham on fire from outside. Wearing the number three reminded me of another big time scorer by the name of Monty Williams who got it done here at Notre Dame. Tying his career high with six three-pointers and 20 points to give the Irish a two-point advantage. Jate with the height advantage over Coulson. And he turns it into a tie game. And that's where the advantage has been for Clemson all afternoon long getting the ball inside but the way Notre Dame is shooting the three it's one of those scenarios where you can't continue to trade Brad Brownell at this point imploring that defense that he's used to seeing from his Tigers to step up here in the second half here comes Grantham to the wing for Reed a dangerous shooter Blossom game recognizes that hasn't been his strength this year his finger roll a little too strong. Farrell, quick toss. Fluger. Looked like Colson may have touched it, but it's rolled out of bounds off the Tigers. We found ourselves in a tie game. Both these offenses executing extremely well. As we now are tied at 53. No Saturdays off of the ACC. Clemson and Notre Dame tied at 53 here in Indiana. And an exciting slate of early action in the ACC. Syracuse. Was the noon game at home today against Pittsburgh. Went on a 30-2 run in the first half to come back and take down Pittsburgh at home. Louisville with a win over Georgia Tech on the road. How about Florida State putting up 93 over Virginia Tech? No Seth Allen because of a concussion protocol in that game. And Duke hangs on against BC 93-82. to NC State North Carolina was supposed to be 8 Eastern. And now Sunday at 1 Eastern instead. So we look ahead to that game. Likely the only time that Dennis Smith will ever play at the Smith Center. Absolutely. And Dennis Smith coming off a triple-double against Virginia Tech earlier in the week. And, of course, he was my pick for ACC Rookie of the Year. And one of the interesting things about Dennis Smith is that he actually enrolled midway through the year last year. You see it often with football players, but very seldom with basketball players. Graduated from high school in December and enrolled at NC State over the break. So he was actually able to practice with the team and be around the team last year as he was recovering from his ACL surgery. And it has paid off this year for Mark Godfrey and his bunch. Similarly in the way that Brad Brownell has had a renewed offensive group here, so has Mark Godfrey. And the Wolfpack. Foul is on Martinez Gebbin, number two on the Lithuanian big man for the Irish. 
Theo Pinson also expected to make his return for North Carolina as well. That'll be a big boost to the rotation there. And North Carolina gets better immediately on the defensive end with Theo Pinson on the floor. And Kenny Williams gaining a lot of experience with Pinson out. It'll be interesting to see how Roy Williams manages that situation as the season goes along. Jate was a little bit outside his range. Blossom game unable to finish. Gastoria down low. Big versus big as Jate wins the battle against Gebbett. Here they come, three on two. And Notre Dame can be at its best. And the bowling pin defense by Clemson draws an offensive foul. Seldom do you see this many bodies falling on one possession. However, Clemson defenders getting in position to take the charge. Brad Brownell has to be happy about the effort of his team getting back defensively. But that is not a popular call amongst the Irish faithful here in Purcell Pavilion. Well, I think it's a bad call because the type of plays like that where it's a clear flop shouldn't be rewarded. Well, no, I wouldn't call that one a flop. I'm not going to say that was a flop. <laughs> there was contact. There was contact there. There's contact, but there's a certain amount of contact that the officials know is required to knock over, let's say, 185 pound 200 pound play when's the last time you took a charge <laughs> well never <laughs> there you go it didn't take much <laughs> Beecham's pull up clears everything but does hit the baseline so the Irish give it up with 840 to go and BJ Beecham has shot the ball extremely well I'm not sure if that's his game creating three-point shots off the dribble but when you shot as well as he has here this afternoon for Mike Bray, you give him one of those <laughs> for a guy that's pretty much carried your offense here. Yeah, even with the miss, Beecham is 6 of 10 from deep with a game-high 20. Meanwhile, Blossom game, who dishes off, has 16 to lead the Tigers. Holmes for Reed, an accomplished score. Colson clears it. Farrell not a big factor today. Six points. That story in the corner is a near lock, not that time. <laughs> Offensive foul. The officials instructed to call the first foul in the post. And Les Jones was there to do just that, third personal against Jete. But that foul doesn't get called if Bonzi Colson just accepts his position. Because he starts to try to fight around and get better defensive position against Jete, that's why he gets the calls. You see Colson going around, and then as he continues to fight, you see as the arm comes out from Jete, that's where the foul is called. Yeah, it doesn't take much. It's really more so about that. That's an automatic now as you extend those arms to try to hold off a defender. It's a foul in comparison to before you were able to do that. But that's been one of the changes in directives this year. The elbows have to be up rather than the arm extended. Absolutely. Fluger, 55 all. That was a flop. <laughs> I think we have we need to have a description of what is a flop and what is not. <laughs> well, we've only got 7:37 left of game time to go, and that's certainly not going to be enough. Just focus on a good game down the stretch. The Irish, the Tigers, locked at 55 here in South Bend. First take is now on ESPN Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern and noon. Stephen A., Max, and Molly discuss and debate the most compelling and entertaining topics in the world of sports on ESPN. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN. 7.37 to go as Notre Dame looks to go to 2-0 in ACC play. 3-0, beg your pardon, Louisville. Earlier today, as we saw the scoreboard 
became the last team in the league to pick up its first conference win. The I'm Cardinals not, now one and two. I'm not sure anyone would have scripted the way the ACC has gotten started that it would have gone this way. But again, not really a surprise when you look at the depth of this league and how good these teams are. And that's the first thing. Whenever you talk to coaches, assistant coaches, anyone involved with this league, they just talk about, man, how good is this league and how unforgiving it is. Whether you're playing good or bad, there are no nights off. Vastoria off the feed from Colson. Now 11 for Vastoria. And that's where the difference has been for Notre Dame's offense here in the second half. Even though they've been successful from three, it's been about their attempts at the rim. That's what they didn't do in the first half, but it's allowed them to gain this two-point lead. Thomas got hit by Colson. Okay, so now we see the ball movement, getting the ball in the post, and Bonzi Colson's done a very good job of giving the basketball up and seeing Vastoria, who moves well without the basketball, getting an opportunity at the rim. But now you've been calling flops all day. Did you see that? I mean, you have no comment about what just happened? It was too late. The whistle had already blown when Colson tried to fake getting a foul so, after the play. So now let me tell you what I think just happened there. I think Bonzi Colson's, it wasn't even a flop. It was a reaction to the call. But he knew that he better act like he wasn't reacting to the call, so he grabbed his face, <laughs> otherwise he would have got a technical foul. <laughs> and it was a smart play by Bonzi to do that, because I think that was more of a reaction to the fact that he had the foul called on him. Those were just the third and fourth free throws taken by the Tigers this afternoon. They're four for four at the line. There have only been eight free throws attempted in this game. And it's been a very physical game, but you have to appreciate the fact that the officials have allowed these guys to play as Farrell gets to the rim and will go to the free throw line for number five and six for Notre Dame but as you look at Thomas and the arms come down so the contact is there but Thomas does a great job going straight up early and that's a play where within this restricted area and the defender jumps if that was not called a foul I would be okay with that if the arms do stay straight up. If the yeah. arms stay straight up. But the heat, I mean, when the arms did come down, it was to block the basketball. It didn't have anything to do with the play. A very rare miss. Farrell, a great free throw shooter. 92%. 58-56. Now the ball going underneath the basket. Game has become a little bit choppy. Farrell, his second foul. 16 fouls against Notre Dame, two against Clemson in the second half. And for Clemson, in their loss at home against North Carolina, free throws became an issue. And so as you move on as a team, this is one of the things where you have to take care of your business, especially if you're going to try to get wins on the road in the ACC. You've got to be able to go to the free throw line and cash in on your opportunities and not leave those points on the table. You said it. It's the first thing that coaches talk about this year. They just shake their head and they go, man, this league. And the champions in the regular season the last two years have had four losses and two losses. According to Ken Pomeroy's projections for this year, it's going to be six losses for the ACC regular season champion. And you can definitely see that because if you look at the teams that, you know, are picked to finish at the top of the league, a lot of those teams already have two losses. When you look at Louisville, you look at Virginia, you know, those, though both those teams were picked to be at the top of the league, both with two losses already on the ACC season. Beecham hits the deck and breaks the third tie of the afternoon. You know, Mike Bray told us before the game, he didn't expect for B.J. Beecham to have 18 great ACC games, but he needed 8 to 10. It hasn't been the case for the first two ACC games, but Beecham has answered the call and stepped up big time here this afternoon. Gabe DeVoe gets himself to the line on the third foul from Matt Farrell. That's the first field goal try for DeVoe here in the second half. 
Remember, he got off to a great start in the first half, shooting deep. And at halftime, Duvall was four of six from three. But the great part about that one, it doesn't even count as a field goal attempt right. when you get to the free throw line. That's the best thing about being a scorer and get to the free throw line is that when you don't make the shot, it doesn't count as a field goal attempt, which makes you so much more efficient as an <laughs> offensive player. Luger gets hit as he drives baseline. And that's the one that Fluger would love to have back at that split second. Just throw it at the rim. He'd be shooting two free throws in comparison to the ball going underneath out of bounds because he tried to pass that one off at the last moment. Lossom game smiling as he's guarding Fluger coming out to the top of the key. They had some funny words exchanged underneath the basket there Absolutely. before the inbound. Yeah, and good sportsmanship, we yeah. should know. Well, yeah, and you love to see that going on. And in this league where games are so competitive, to get an opportunity to see guys playing this hard, but yet knowing that sportsmanship is important is key, just like it's key for Notre Dame's offense for Bonzi Colson to have a presence in the paint. Mitchell to the interior, the defense collapses, and Blossom Game still finds a way to score. You have to love Jerome Blossom Game, and honestly, his temperament, as this game becomes even more competitive and we get to, cr get to crunch time, Brad Brown now knows he has one guy for certain that he can put the basketball in his hands and expect for good things to happen. Yes, as we know, it's important to have the best temperament. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you're over here flying off the handle on the microphone, that's not going to be good for either one of <laughs> Foul on the floor. Farrell tucked it, and he had to get rid of it. Just two seconds left on the shot clock. You know, Bonzi Colson's got that seven-foot wingspan. It helps him even when he misses a shot, because now he grabs his own rebound. He's got 11 points, 10 boards today, his 10th double-double of the year. And he leads the ACC in double-doubles. And he continues to now try to operate in the post. Wow. Thomas. Farrell in the reverse. The Irish by two. Mitchell steps just inside the arc. And he had all the space he needed from Farrell. And Shelton Mitchell is a much improved shooter. Spent a lot of time working on his jump shot last year in his redshirt year sitting out after transferring from Vanderbilt. That's not a shot that he was making two years ago. But shoots it, of course, at crunch time is very confident. Saw Beecham had his jersey grab there. And the Irish turn it over. gotten louder and louder every time the ball has come down this end of the floor. Mitchell goes to the left hand and scores over top of Colson. And Thomas getting the call over to Tay at this point of the game in the post. And it pays off for Clemson. As Elijah Thomas gives him a two-point lead off a beautiful post move. Mike Gray called the timeout, wants to talk it over with his team as they trail by two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Indiana 0-2 and in conference play, just 10-5 and on the year. Meanwhile, Bonzi Colson is 10th double-double of the season. And 11 points as well today for him. They're going to need him down the stretch. Four of eight from the floor. The last non-guard at Notre Dame to open with 10 or more points in the first 15 games. you got to go back a while. Luke Heron Cody in 2009-2010 did it in the first 25 games back in the old Big East. And the only reason he didn't do it 26, he got hurt yeah, in the 26th game. It's Farrell. That's had a great second half 
distributing the basketball, handling the pressure, and knocking down shots as he reclaims the lead for the Fighting Irish. The vote for Mitchell driving from the wing and no help side defense. The Tigers up by one. And these are areas in the in the past where Clemson struggled to score, and Brad Brownell's team would often lose games because they don't have the offensive firepower to go out and match teams, especially after they make a big shot. But you see Shelton Mitchell, his confidence offensively, coming right back after Farrell makes that three to regain the lead for the Tigers. Farrell swatted out of bounds by Thomas. He's come to play on the defensive end this afternoon. Timeout here for Notre Dame. Thomas now with three blocks. Mike Gray told us before the game, I'm not expecting B.J. Beecham to be great every ACC game. But we need eight to ten of those games for him to be great with everything else that they have going on. And Beecham has been extraordinary here tonight. Eight for 14 from the field, six for 10 from beyond the three-point arc. And he made the first three-point field goal of the game for Notre Dame. And he's continued his hot shooting the entire afternoon. And big shot after big shot, B.J. Beecham continues to carry the scoring load for Notre Dame when their usual leading scorers haven't had their greatest games. Beecham has stepped up for 22 points here this afternoon. And this game has fit the bill of the typical Notre Dame Clemson matchup in the four they've played since Notre Dame joined the ACC. Two games in Notre Dame, two in South Carolina, and three of those four have been decided by six points or fewer. Vastoria was open in the corner, and he takes advantage, 70-68. Blossom game, one on two. A big response from Blossom game after a defensive breakdown by Clemson on the underneath out-of-bounds plays. Gabe DeVoe is looking to the bench, telling his coach, that's my bad, by allowing a wide-open three-pointer from one of the best shooters in the ACC out of an underneath inbound play. Fluger, a shot fake, a dish. And it's Coulson to regain the edge. Mitchell to the sideline where Brad Brownell wants a timeout to draw something up with 44 seconds to play. And just like that, Matt Farrell continues to operate in the paint, but it's Rex Fluger's penetration and dish to Bonzi Colson that gives Notre Dame the two-point lead. And after being down 18 to 2 in points in the paint in the first half, Notre Dame has come fighting back, attacking the rim, and getting the job done inside the paint to not only make this an even game, but to take a two point lead with 44 seconds remaining. Colson, 13 points, 11 rebounds. Notre Dame led by 22 from Beecham, 14 from Vastoria, and 12 from Farrell. Can't say enough about the bench minutes they've gotten, though, whether it's been Gibbs or Torres, most importantly, perhaps Fluger. I believe Fluger has come in, and we talked about early in the game, normally a more of a defensive presence, but he's had a strong impact on the offensive end of the floor here this afternoon. Mitchell, Thomas, Reed, DeVoe, and Blossom game on the floor for Clemson. It's DeVoe from three. No.
They can play out the possession here without a foul. Seven second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. And Brad Brennell's team not going to foul. They're going to play it out to see if they can come up with a stop. And then go down and try to get a quick two, more than likely without calling a timeout if they're able to get a rebound. Five on the shot clock. NBA three. Oh, it's good for Farrell. Five point game. Now Reed from three. Back iron, no. And the rebound to Colson. Notre Dame hangs on at home, 75-70, and the Irish stay perfect in the ACC. Matt Farrell, who owned the second half for the Fighting Irish, making the shot of the game, a.k.a. the nail in the coffin to finish off the Tigers. Big shot by Farrell, who showed up in the biggest moments all season long for the Fighting Irish. None bigger than that one here in the second half. Well, what a finish. There are no Saturdays off in this league. Clemson, for the second straight game, falls in a close one. It was 89-86 overtime against Carolina on Tuesday here. Lost by five against Notre Dame on the road. And the Irish now 5-0 and against Clemson in the series all time. This one never got too far either way. And it ends with an exclamation mark three from Matt Farrell. Notre Dame now 14-2, Clemson 11-4. Illinois, Indiana up next, but now let's get you to the studio. Matt Schick and Dino Gaudio.